Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 2.10. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Like always, we need to ensure we are using the same unit of measurement in solid work setting. Now, looking at this geometry, you can see different dimensions and different views. My preference is to start with the front view and you can see there's so many dimensions shown here. I want to start with a 2D sketch here and then I'm going to use extruded bus feature to make the final geometry. So with this introduction, let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. In SOLIDWORKS, first thing first, we need to check unit of measurement and you can see in the right corner that the unit of measurement that we have here is millimeter gram second which is a correct unit of measurement. Now, to start making the part, let's click on a sketch, click on a sketch command, and I'm gonna choose front plane. Here, I wanna start with the center circle of the geometry. So I click on circle command, and I'm gonna make one circle here, second one here. We also need two more circles, the large circles that you can see far from these circles. So I'm gonna make one circle like this and one circle like this. Because we see some dimensions and angles in this question, it's always wise to have a center line to help us with adding dimensions. So what I can do here, I'm gonna click on line command and then here there's a center line command. I'm gonna make a line here and I'm gonna make a second line here. This is just for helping me with uh, making the sketch, okay? Okay, so now we have these two circles. Let's add dimensions to these circles. The inner circle has diameter of 21 millimeters. So I click on the smart dimension and this is 21 millimeter. Second circle, has a radius of 18 millimeter, which means that the diameter of the circle should be 36 millimeters. So I click on this circle. If you can't do that math, you can just simply type two times 18 and hit enter. And you can see that the total diameter is 36 millimeter. Okay. What about the dimensions of other circles? You can see that in the question, we have the radius of these circles shown in a question. So I can click on a smart dimension. And for this circle, I know that the radius is 51 millimeters. So the diameter should be two times 51. And same for the other circle. I know that the radius is 64 millimeters. So the diameter should be two times 64. Okay, so now we have these circles defined. Okay, so now we have these circles fully defined, let's focus on the other parts of the geometry. Let's click on line command and then here I'm going to make one line here and then a second line here. Okay, so now looking at the geometry, you can see that the angle between the first line and horizontal line is defined and that should be 15 degrees. So I click on a smart dimension. I click on the line, I click on horizontal line, and then this angle should be 15 degree, okay? We also know that the second line should be parallel to the first line. Why? Because in a question, the distance between these lines is defined. If you have a distance, that means that those two lines are parallel. So I click on the blue line, hold control, click on the black line, and then here I'm gonna choose relationship of parallel, okay? And we also know that the distance is defined in a question. The distance should be 13 millimeters. So I click on a smart dimension, click on a blue line, black line, and this distance should be 13. Great, so now we have these two lines fully defined. Let's repeat this process for the top section of the geometry. I click on a line command, and then starting from the center, I make one line and then I'm gonna make another line here. Okay, according to the question, the angle between the first line and a vertical line should be 30 degrees. So I click on a smart dimension, click on the line, click on a vertical line, and then this angle should be 30 degree. Also, the blue line and a black line should be parallel. So 
I click on a blue line, hold control, click on a black line, and I'm going to choose parallel constraint. The distance between these two lines is also shown in a question, and that should be 13 millimeters. So I click on a spark dimension, click on a blue line, click on a black line, and this distance should be 13 millimeter. Awesome. So now we have these two sections fully covered. Let's go and focus on another circle on the right side of the geometry. You can see that we have two circles. So what I can do, I can make one circle here and make the second circle here. Let's add the dimensions for these circles. If you look at detail A in a question, you can find a diameter of these circles. The diameter of the inner circle should be 16 millimeters, so this is 16. And the outer circle should have a 32 millimeter diameter, so this is 32. Also, the distance between the center point of these circles and the center point of the geometry is defined, and that should be 85 millimeters. So I click on this point, I click on the center point, and this distance should be 85. Finally, we need two parallel lines. I click on line command, and then starting from here, I make one line, and I'm going to make another line here okay looking at detail a we can see that the distance between these two lines should be 18 millimeters so I click on a smart dimension I click on the line and this distance should be 18 also I want this section to be symmetric um, with respect to this horizontal line so what I can do I can click on the blue line then I hold control click on a symmetry line then I click on the blue line and I'm going to choose symmetric constraint okay and now you can see I have a fully defined geometry that's great so next step could be adding a fillet radius or trimming the geometry my preference is to add fillet in a 3d part of the geometry not in a 2d section because if by any chance in the future you want to make a change in a geometry it's a huge pain to re get rid of those fillet in a 2D sketch. It's always easier to remove fillet or radius in a 3D model. So what I want to do, I want to first trim this 2D sketch, use extrude boss feature to make it 3D, and then I'm going to use fillet radius. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start trimming this geometry. To do this, from the sketch tab, I'm going to click on trim entities. And in here, I don't need this one, this line, I don't need it, I don't need this section, what else? I don't need this, 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 and this, right? So I think everything is kind of there. I can get rid of this part, this part, this part, and also this part, okay? The rest, it's not really important. I can simply extrude whatever feature I want. So now I have my geometry. Let's use extruded bus feature to make a 3D model. So I'm going to click on feature and I'm going to use extruded bus. Nice part is that here in a contour you can select whatever you want. So I'm going to select this circle. I'm going to select this one, this section, this section, this circle, this circle. So that's what I want to extrude, right? Okay. Now, the overall thickness is shown in a question. The thickness of the part should be seven millimeters. So I change the thickness to seven. I click on OK, and that's my geometry. Awesome. So now I have the 3D model. It's time to add fillet to the corners. If you look at detail A in a question, you can see that the radius for the fillet is shown with six millimeters, and they use typical. Typical means that the fillet radius is applied to every features in a geometry and it's always six millimeters so from the feature I'm gonna click on fillet and I'm gonna change the radius to six and here I'm gonna choose the corners like this one this corner this corner this this one this one this one and this one and I also need to add fill it to this corner and finally last one is this click on OK 
and this is our final geometry okay so that's a final 3d model let's check the total volume and make sure this is a correct model so let's go back to the main question and find the total volume provided in a question in the question the total volume is provided here the total volume is 36,748 cubic millimeters. Let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and check the total volume in our model. In SOLIDWORKS, in order to check the total volume, you can click on Evaluate and then you can choose Mass Properties. And here you can see the total volume. The total volume is 36,748.29 cubic millimeters. If you round up this number, you're getting exactly the same number as it's shown in the main question. This is showing that our modeling is correct and there's no problem with it. Okay, I think that's it. That's a wrap for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any feedback or question, please leave comments down below. Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.